Okay, so <clears throat> my talk will be on the equatorial uh, Atlantic variability. So all the talk we've been having since uh, morning on the Atlantic has been on the extra tropics. So what I try to show here is that there is some strong decadal variability in the tropical Atlantic. So I have to acknowledge some people that have contributed to this work and all of them except one uh, is here, so you can also discuss uh, this work further or ask questions to them. Okay, so I, I start by giving some background on what is called tropical Atlantic variability. There are two major modes. Uh, one occurs during uh, spring, and that is the so-called Atlantic meridional mode that is like a dipole structure one just north of the equator, and then the other one south in the Koton, but then a bit further south, and this occurs in, in spring. And the peak periodicity is around eight years or so. There's been a lot of work on this, and the relation between this on um, uh, trop Atlantic uh, tropical cyclone and all that. Then in, in, in summer, there's a second mode this uh, so-called Atlantic Nino you know, is like a, a smaller brother to the big uh, El Nino in the Pacific Ocean. So yeah, I just said it in terms of time scales. The meridional mode is basically a sub decadal not really a decadal uh, variability. But then the the Atlantic Nino you know, is basically in Taranoal. So. From different calculations, the periodicity is between roughly two years to a little more than four years. So in terms of the mechanisms driving this, I, so I'm coming down to Atlantic, you know, that is the equatorial mode, which is what I'll discuss further. So in terms of the mechanisms, uh, there are the standard theory is that this is controlled by the by the Bjarkney's mechanism, just like you have in the Pacific Ocean, where you have the interaction between wind, SST, and then thermocline. Then, but uh, recently, there's been several other mechanisms pro proposed, like uh, Ingo Richter proposed what he called a New Atlantic, you know, where you have a mixed layer temperature advection from northern part of tropical Atlantic towards the equatorial region. And also recently, there is a second uh, interest in, uh, in waves, equatorial waves that can drive SST variability and all that. So all these are based on, on ocean dynamics. So the question we have tried to pose recently, which is a motivation for the present work on decadal variability, is how important is when you combine all these different theories about ocean dynamics, if you combine them together, what is their total contribution to um, this Atlantic Nino variability? So if we go back to the basics, the SST variability is driven by a combination of ocean dynamics and uh, heat fluxes within the mixed layer. So given by this equation, sorry. So we can, the first equation is just a simple expression of the heat budget in a fully coupled ocean model. But then if we have, we can remove the first part in blue there so that we are left with the second part in red, which is the thermodynamic feedbacks, that is heat flux, net heat flux. And we can, do the, we can do the heat budget within the small box in the lower plot there, that is the Atlantic Nino you know, box. So if we do this, what we find using two different uh, fully coupled models is that you look at the upper panels in, you look at the upper panels, you see that the, you see that the contribution from the advection terms, that is the dynamical terms, in terms of the quantity are so much smaller compared to contributions from the heat fluxes, that is the lower panels. Then in terms of the timing, for example, if you look at the GFDL model, you find out that what actually drives the SST variability is heat flux. 
at t minus two before the peak phase of the Atlantic you know, event, while the dynamical part actually become important when the Atlantic you know, peak phase has already set. So and another way of looking at this, if, if we take the same, exactly the same models, the only difference is that one is coupled to just um, heat flux, that is so-called slab model. And then the other one is coupled to the full ocean dynamics. And we just take a measure of variability of the Atlantic you know, index as a standard deviation, and we plot and compare two of them. So what you see on the left panel is for the Atlantic Ocean. So you see the pinkish color is for the just heat flux alone slab model. Then the blue is when you couple to the full ocean dynamics. So what you find is that in all the models, so much of the variability comes from slab model alone. Then if you compare with Pacific, it is completely something different. And yet, I mean, the understanding, the theories uh, we have about the Atlantic is basically based on analogies we take from what we already know in the Pacific Ocean. So one thing to suspect once you see this, you think, oh, maybe in the, in the, in the, in the, in the models, the, the, the distinct, the mixed layer depth is not well represented. So what we find actually is that the mixed layer depth in these models is actually consistent with observation. And in general, at least in the Atlantic Nino region, is basically there is east to the right of the red line there. It's basically less than 50 meters, actually. So yeah, this is for the rest of the models, uh, the individual models, I mean. So, what we understand from this analysis is that if you have idea of the variability of Atlantic Nino from the slab model without ocean dynamics, you can easily say what the variability would be if the model is fully coupled, at least judging by the 12 CMIP models we studied. Again, if you look at the panel to the right, that is for the Pacific Ocean, this is not so. So this background is the motivation for the present work which we are doing now, which is basically still ongoing. And the question is, how important, <clears throat> how important is atmospheric variability to equatorial Atlantic uh, variability? So from what we already know and what I've said, the, it is well known that this meridional mode is basically driven by the atmosphere. The theory is the so-called worst feedback. So recently, there's also a paper that just plotted without discussing so much that just showed uh, this um, spectrum of Atlantic Nino index. And if you look at it, you see something around 10 to 14 years or so. You see something that looks like a peak. So the question is, this peak, is it real? Is it not real? And this peak is for summer. So what we've done here is, if we take observation and calculate the spectrum of Atlantic Nino for the different months, so for the different months on the x-axis and on the vertical axis, what you have is different periodicities. So you see that around, around 10 years plus some few years, you have strong variability starting from sometime around spring going into summer. And if we try to look at a spatial pattern of this, that is taking the UF of the box, calculating the UF and then regressing it on global SST, what we find is a well-defined, the meridional mode, the north-south mode in spring, that is the top panel. But in summer, the pattern changes. And what we have is basically an equatorial mode that looks like Atlantic Nino. You know. Sorry, I have to say that this data is filtered. So we are looking at um, 8 to 25 year time scale. So every variability above 25 years is being cut off. And everything less than 8 years is being cut off also. Sorry. And 
the importance of this, if we look at the correlations there, if you take rainfall over the southern part of West Africa in summer, which is the main rainy season for this place, so we find very strong correlation both in reanalysis and then if you repeat this with observation, we still find very strong correlation. But for the, for the Sahel, even though there's negative correlation, for the box we consider the correlation is not so robust. Again, if we take a box over northern part of South America, up to from 10 south to 10 north, we still get very strong uh, correlation, both in observation and uh, in, in reanalysis. So at least this shows that the, this mode is important and could be useful to understand the decadal variability of rainfall in these places. Okay, so from the literature, actually, this mode, something like this mode has been described. If you look at the pattern I showed in, in the previous slide, what we have is like what uh, Shea and Tanimoto called in 1998 a uh, pan-Atlantic mode that extends well, well north and then going back into the south into South Atlantic Ocean, where you have bands of uh, cool SST, warm SST, and all that. And this is a decadal mode which they described. I, uh, however, this is basically considered either a spring mode or or an, a, an annual mode and not considered a summer mode. So if we look at the evolution of this, the SST anomaly now by taking the UF for individual months, starting from March to April to going down to the rest of the month. So what we find is that in March and April, the strong anomaly is basically in the in the north of equator. Then in April, this is basically the same. Uh, starting from, from May, the northern part of the anomaly begins to cool down, begins to weaken, while the southern part of it, that is the Atlantic Nino region, begins to warm. And then by the time you get to June, the northern part is already weakened, and the southern part is very, very strong. Now, so this is basically the transition between this is sometime in between in May and June. So what we do now, if you look at the spectrum now, you find out that the stronger variability is in May, it is in May June, and then again we've said that the transition is also in May June. So what we've done here is to take the SST and then sea level uh, sea level pressure, because. Of course, in the tropical Atlantic, you have this very strong coupling between the ocean and the atmosphere, both in terms of the Atlantic Nino and in terms of the meridional mode also. So take the two of them, do a maximum covariance and analysis, and then take the time series and regress it onto the global anomalies. And what we find here is like a, a truly uh, pan-Atlantic mode, where the SST anomalies, both in the south, in the equatorial, uh, in the tropical region, and then in the north, uh, basically of comparative magnitude. Okay, so just to conclude, we have tried to describe, or we are trying to describe a strong decadal variability in Atlantic Ocean that, that occurs in, during the boreal summer. And we have shown that this is related to rainfall over the nearby continent. And we consider this mode as a part of the pan-Atlantic, uh, as a part of the pan-Atlantic mode. And what happens is that the anomaly is actually is related to both North Atlantic and also South Atlantic Ocean, which I have not gone to show so, so, so much now. So yeah, thank you, I stop here.